I'm Justin McRoberts, and you are listening to the Title Pending Audio Series, a collection of readings focused on moments in my own creative history that I hope shed an inspired light on yours. Chapter 13. Practice. Measure your best against your best. A friend of mine has been managing bands and artists since the early 1980s, and among the many insightful and entertaining stories he tells is one about a time when the members of a band he currently manages walked into his office and handed him a collection of songs for their next project. They'd worked for about a year to put the songs together and then spent a few weeks and a few thousand dollars recording some slick-sounding pre-production tracks. And that's when this conversation took place. The manager said, This is good work, to which the band replied, Thanks, we're really happy with it. But then my friend said, I'm specifically pleased with these five songs. They're clearly the better songs in the collection, wouldn't you agree? The band looked at the list and said, yeah, probably. So their manager, my friend, said, all right, then I'm pushing the recording back. The band replied, um, why? To which he said to them, start writing again and see if you can write five songs at least as good as the five best of this batch, and then we'll have a great record on our hands instead of half a good one. After hearing this story in 2007, I listened back to the songs I had written for my next project, and I started cutting. I would rough-tracked 16 songs and was able to cut that list down to about six almost immediately. I knew exactly which songs were lesser songs. I'd known that before I heard my friend recount the above story, but hadn't given myself emotional permission to do something about it. In other words, I'd settled. I'd compromised on my own process. And that's bad news. I didn't become an artist in order to make second best work. With six songs in hand, I pushed my own studio dates back another two months and got back to writing. It was brutal. I was overwhelmed at the idea of writing five or six new songs from scratch. In desperation, I went back to a few songs that I'd cut from the first list and I listened again. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe there was something here that might work. And I was right, in a way. Listening to the lesser batch of songs, I realized that not every part of every song I cut was worth cutting. I didn't need to trash all of each song. So I lifted the better pieces from a few of those songs and started writing from those better parts to build new songs. And because I had the six better songs to compare the new material to, I had a metric by which to evaluate my progress. I had a bar to clear. Two months and five new songs later, I began recording the album I'd eventually call Deconstruction. And I have no problem admitting that the quality leap between Deconstruction and any of my previous work is significant. Most interesting to me is that I think the second batch of songs are actually the strongest on the album. Among that second set is a song entitled Done Living, which has, at least until this point, sold more than any song I've ever written before or since. It's also a song that continues to be a quality marker of my songwriting process even now. Done Living is like the bar each of my songwriting efforts has to clear. Writing even one good song should be a clue to you that you can do it again. Pixar animator Eric Ely recounts the strange feeling of fear hanging in the air in Pixar after their early successes. Had they done their best work? Was their next film destined to drown in the luminous shadow of Toy Story? Success, especially early success, can be terrifying. Thankfully, courage won the day in the hearts of Pixar's lead creators, and they considered their remarkable successes coming out of the gate as evidence that they could do more work of equal or even higher quality. Let the good work you do produce become the bar that your other work has to clear, or at least gets close to. Measure your best against your best. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Title Pending Audio Series. If you've enjoyed listening and you'd like to take another step or two in the direction of your own creative process, navigate your way to yourcreativeprocess.info. And there you'll find an online course I've designed for you.